day when I talked to some of my students and they told me, no, do this in English, it's more authentic. Um, print Media Technologies is an English taught program in print media technologies, as the name projects, and uh, it's aiming at international students. And the reason is very simple. A German taught program would never suffice. We wouldn't have enough students here. Um, the whole program would be much, much smaller. And printing is everywhere on this planet. And there has been always a great call from abroad, people who ask us and say, well, do you offer something in printing? And we always had to say, nah, yeah, but it's in German and you need to learn German first. And so um, the opportunities were limited. In 2017, we decided that we would do this in English. It was a great change. And while doing so, we also changed the target and the contents of the course. And I will tell you a little bit about the program because this year we had our first graduates. Well, we advertised the study course with one of the slogans, choosing a bachelor in print media technology is just the beginning. And now you might ask, what is the beginning? Now, the beginning starts with, you know, the first semester. Now, here you see our last first semester, 29 nationalities in one semester. And across the study program, we have 49 nationalities. This is quite a big you know, diversity, and you can imagine, 49 nationality speak 57 different languages. So we speak 57 different languages. And of course, the unifying language is English because we teach in English. Now, one of our students who is now, uh, who has finished his degree, he's an American, he went to China, now he works in America again. He said once, print communication is a massive, fascinating industry. To become a quality in this field um, means to become a technical engineer, a creative designer, and capable business executive all at the same time. And I'm sure you will agree that he is absolutely right. Now let's come to the program and let's better understand why is this in English and why is that so important. First of all, we have a continuous global economic growth. Even so, there may be an economic crisis, but when you look at the, you know, all countries on this planet, we have an economic growth. We also have a population growth. Now that suggests that printing cannot go down worldwide because packaging is an increasing business. So we see there's a great opportunity for printing across this planet. So printing is a global business. Everywhere you find printing presses you know, across the entire planet. And I was very surprised when I traveled to see how modern companies are even in third world countries, you would say, in emerging countries. Most modern technology stands everywhere. So globalization has resulted in our industry even being intervened with people. You know, you know, some of you, you invest across, you know, the planet, you have in different country subsidiaries and employees, of course, and more and more companies are shifting their business to other countries, also out of Germany, because there are more opportunities in printing. Um, then, you know, people come to us and say, well, you know, I need people for my business. Yesterday I had a call from a company in the UK, a company obviously based in Dubai. They are ink manufacturers and their European headquarters are in Europe, and they told me, well, we definitely we need uh, more uh, graduates here. Uh, do you have somebody? And I need to tell them, well, you know, it's not easy getting our graduates because they all have already jobs before they graduate. I come to this. So they need to get involved. So it goes on, you know. I get telephone calls by HP saying, well, you know, we have a post in Barcelona. Can you quickly send somebody? Well, it is not so quick. So these are things I want to make you aware of. Yes, there are students, but you need to get involved to get, you know, to the right person um, for your business. Then um, there is a growing demand for well-trained young engineering professionals, but not just in Germany, all over the world. And English is no foreign language. It's our common means of communication. And wherever you go, you know, abroad, even if you go to Italy, you probably speak English with your business partners. Now, let us see what do we do 
cause. And first of all, we sit together and said, well, you know, if we have a cause, it's got to be sustainable. It's got to be sustainable, not just joke that we say, oh, you know, people come from all over the world. No, it's not so easy. You need basically to be attractive to those people. And so we looked at the societal trends. At the moment, we can see individualization. You know, people want to individualize. Um, they want their individualized clothes. They want their individualized tattoos. They want their individualized furniture. They want their individualized holidays. And when you look at it, you know, it's across society. But that's also a global phenomenon. Then we are in connectivity and digitization. That's the reason why we sit together here. But this is across all businesses. We have a global communication lifestyle. We were just talking recently, you know, when we went on holidays in the 1970s. And we called back, you know, home to call back home, to get through. And uh, nowadays, it's actually no question. We're no longer calling. We are sending WhatsApp. We are sending small videos, you know. We are always available. It doesn't matter where we are. And another big ability. Since the energy costs are rising, it's it's it's, it's big. It's a big talk about how can we be more sustainable. Think about all the plastic waste of packaging. Packaging has become a problem. Plastic. So how are we dealing with that? It's also part of our industry, right? Isn't it? So when we look at trends, translated to products, say you know what is it? So the idea was then to say where well, the study costs must come from the product. The product comes first, there's a product idea, and then you look, you know, how can I produce it? It's not that you say, well, I need a new product, I have, you know, and how, what I can do on an offset press. You think about a new product and then say, well, how can I produce it? So therefore, we translated these trends, individualization, sustainability, and interconnectivity. And I put a few abbreviations over there. You see VDP, variable data printing, and POD, Printing on demand, and then IoT, the Internet of Things. Now, when you look at packaging, printing, individualization is something which is now debated. And the packaging printers will tell you, ah, it's not really a big thing now, but it will be in the future. Believe me, online trade will make this possible because you will buy individualized food online. You wouldn't buy your yogurt, which you can get next door from Lidl, um, you know, at, at, through the internet, but you will buy your own, you know, specified yogurt, you buy your own coffee brand, and then you would like to have an individual packaging as well with it. So we can see, okay, everything which comes online gives us the individualize. So therefore, there will be a growing business. And then you put, you know, your son, your daughter, your grandson onto that picture. Then sustainability in packaging, I don't need to say anything else, you know, is a big business. We need to change materials, we need to have thinner materials, need to have, you know, new um, biodegradable materials. And interconnectivity is also, um, do I get extra information? Can I do things online while I'm buying? Is, can I see the product? Can I turn it on my, on my mobile and see how the, the contents looks like? So that's then commercial printing, I don't tell you about the photo book and all the wonderful workflows you know about. But also in sustainability, you know, how commercial products. Paper recycling is an issue. It's very expensive. And it's only worth doing it because the fibers are so expensive. But probably we need to look in recycling methods. Method. And then also we... Um, one of my colleagues, you know, printed batteries and so on and so forth, which are combined with probably commercial products. Up here, 3D printing is a big issue. Also, in terms of individualization, you buy your individualized product, it will be printed on demand as well. And you can see here, that's not 3D, but 2D, where inkjet comes in, where you actually entire furniture online and get it delivered. You can have your individualized tiles. So that's also growing business. And then anything which is interconnective, here for example, a printed circuit, a little sender, and then you can connect this to the internet and then the doctor knows when you take the pills. So this is the translation of the, of the trends. Now, how can we get this into Because our students who study now, they need to be employed 
30 years' time. So they need to find a job in 2050. I will be long time dead, you know, when they still be working. Some of these new students, they are 17 years of age. When do you think? Probably 2065, 2070. We can hardly imagine how the world looks like. So how do you translate that into a, into a study program? How do we arm our students with the right so that they get a job in 30 years' time? What we thought is very important. First of all, we look at these trends because we believe these are long-term trends and our technology. So individualization, digital printing, post-press, uh, workflows, all of that goes in here. Digitization is additive manufacturing, automation, functional printing. And sustainability is all about packaging, materials, substrates, you know, also the CO2, uh, CO2 uh, footprint and so on. And then to get into this, we still need natural sciences because we believe, or, or we know, in 50 years, mathematics will not change. So that is the basics you need to know to build upon. So we are not reducing this. No, we're instead building this up because we think this will be more relevant for our students. Then technology-wise, we go into these processes and do what is cutting edge. And then in the communication, um, because of global business, language courses are important. Our international students learn German, all of them. So when they do their internship, they should have a B1 level in German, so they can communicate. Our German students, which are a few, they need to learn a third language, Spanish, Italian, or French, I guess. Then we have some uh, course in international business, law and commerce, and ethnic and cultural diversity which is also important because when you have five students in one course from five different continents, they communicate if they have five different religions, it, they have different thinkings, but they need to come to a common solution. So this is not so easy for the individuals, believe me. The course itself, the curriculum, is divided in seven semesters. Uh, the first semester, every row is one semester. The first two semesters are the ones which actually create the um, equal um, playing field, I should say, a level where everybody uh, can build on. So we have material science, mathematics, we do have information technology, pre-media technology in color, s uh, physics for engineers, and of course the first language courses. And then we go on with the technology courses, and then the internship, and then there are some, um, say, um, optional courses for them in sixth semester. You can offer uh, internships for hours in your company, learn there. It's the first possibility to connect to them and, you know, to have probably future prospective, um, you know, employees. Then mobility windows for everybody important who gets a visa to America or Canada, because there we have our partner universities, Clemson University in South Carolina, um, Ryzen University in Toronto in Canada, and uh, the Cal Poly in California. There are possibilities. They also teach printing, and this is where our students can come for one semester. We always, every, every semester, we get Americans coming in and they study with us. Now, I'm at the end, and i like to introduce you our first graduates. There's a, is, is a picture of our graduates with family and members and professors, as you can see, and then you can see it's a real thing. And our students have very good pro uh, Two of them are not on the picture because they had already business trips to attend. One of them, an Egyptian, he started with an American company. He got you know, a very, very good uh, starting salary, and the company was very pleased to hear that he speaks English, German, Spanish, and Arab. And um, then we have an Indian. This is also an interesting student here. He is Pakistani descent, has Italian citizenship, uh, did his A case in Germany, work for uh, an Italian company. And this Italian company was very interested in employing him. So there are possibilities as well. And, uh, you know, the right one told me just oh, got to stop. I will stop now and wish you a lovely day. Thank you.